251. Responsibility and Change. Calcedon Report No. 49, September 1969. On July 26, 1969, it was my privilege to attend Dr. Hans Senhold's seminar on the dollar crisis. As Dr. Senholz concluded his very able and intensely interesting account of a monetary problem, he analysed the decline of the paper dollar and the grim future, and then concluded thus, to cite my summary notes, The people are to blame. The government is their tool. People make demands on the government for a growing list of services, demanding aids, services, grants which create an inflationary economy. Peter has been taxed to pay Paul. The end of the road is in sight, but the pressures on the government by the people continue. Price controls and a dictator loom ahead on this road, and economic destruction. The people must change before the trend can change. These admirable words reflect a Christian perspective. They echo the faith in personal responsibility, which is basic to Christian Western civilization. Yet, within a week, as I reported these words to a number of Christian and conservative ministers and laymen, I received a large number of objections. I was told, not true, the people have been misled. Not true, it has been a conspiracy against the innocent public. Wrong, let me give you a book proving who has fooled the public, and so on. During the same time, I also saw a leftist analysis of the tight money situation It was described as a capitalistic conspiracy against the people. The leftist analysis alone was logical, although wrong. The Marxist perspective is that not individual responsibility, but environment is a source of sin, wrong and evil. Men are victims, not sinners. Change the environment and you change man. Dr. Senholz has echoed the Christian presupposition, change the man and you change the environment. These, quote, Christians, end quote, and quote, unquote, conservatives who criticised Dr. Senholz were revealing the extent to which they had absorbed Marxist premises. They were carrying the old banners, but marching in an alien army. Let us analyse the matter more carefully. First, the matter of conspiracy. Most simply defined by the dictionary, a conspiracy is a, quote, combination of men for a single end, In law, it is a combination for either unlawful ends or to use unlawful means towards an end in view. The Christian must take the conspiracy view of history seriously because Scripture teaches throughout that history is a struggle with the forces of evil conspiring against God and his anointed. Psalm 2 History is not a blind, impersonal force, as for the Marxists, but a very personal work of God primarily and secondarily of men. Thus, conspiracies are real because men are very real forces in history. But second, because the Bible denies that history is the product of unconscious, impersonal forces and drives, it asserts individual responsibility. In Genesis chapter 3, it made it clear that the essence of sin is to blame other persons or the environment for one's own guilt. Adam, by blaming his environment, God, and his wife, Eve, for his sin, only aggravated his guilt. It follows, therefore, that we can alert people to what various conspiracies are doing to undermine or subvert a nation, but we cannot, as Christians, blame any conspiracy for our weakness or fall. Men stand or fall in terms of their faith and character. True, man's faith and character is subjected to attack, but so was Adam's. In this world, there is always testing, temptation and trial. The question is, do we submit to it or overcome it? Dr. Senholz was right. The people must change before the trend can change. Any conclusion other than individual responsibility is a denial of Christianity and is an implicit Marxism. Because so many ostensible Christians and conservatives lack a biblically grounded faith, Their actions and statements often end up in an unconscious anti-Christianity. As a result, some so-called conservative movements are moving into strange waters and revealing anti-Christian and anti-conservative tendencies. 
Take, for example, an article in the summer 1969 issue of The American Mercury by Ravello P. Oliver, Ph.D. Christianity, Religion of the West The editorial heading indicates that the editors regard the article to be very good and of, quote, major importance, end quote. The thesis of the article is that only Western or European man is congenial to Christianity. The Bible says that no man naturally is congenial to it, whatever his race. Only God's supernatural grace conforms him to it. But for Oliver, the natural Christian, and only real one, is the Western, racial man. According to Oliver, missionaries only succeeded where imperialistic guns backed them and failed where there was no backing. This is, of course, the Marxist line on the relationship of imperialism and missions. This does not mean that Oliver is a Marxist, but his non-biblical thought places him in a common camp at this point. Oliver chooses to ignore the vast evidences of native faith in Asia and Africa in the face of persecutions, nor does he acknowledge the frequent opposition of imperial agents to missionaries as, quote, meddlers, end quote. His evidence is negligible and his total picture anti-Christian. True, in recent years, Christianity has had serious setbacks in many parts of Asia and Africa, but not because imperialism has wanes. The decline has been due to the same reasons for the decline of Christianity in Europe and America. Men have turned to alien and humanistic faiths. Oliver, the American Mercury, W.A. Carto and others, who are regarded as strong conservatives, are also great admirers of the late Francis Parker Yockey and his work, Imperium, the Philosophy of History and Politics, 1948. Yockey's position is atheistic and anti-Christian. Yockey was also a strong champion of race, and especially of what he called ethical socialism, page 617. Ethical socialism is the socialism you operate. The other man's socialism is always unethical. Yockey's work has overtones of Nietzsche and an inferior echo of Spengler. Incidentally, his complaint against Marxism is not that it is socialistic, but that, quote, the ethical and social foundations of Marxism are capitalistic. Page 80. Yockey's book is a pompous, turgid restatement of every kind of immoralistic philosophy of the last century, which said, Someone did this to us, not we ourselves. Like Adam, who said, The woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Genesis chapter 3 verse 12. So Yockey worked to absolve Western man of guilt, even as he compounded it with unbelief and moral irresponsibility. The people must change before the trend can change. This is not a popular programme. People want an enemy to blame, not themselves. How much easier to expose and blame than to reconstruct? Marxism has a simple, sure appeal. The bad guys did it to us. People, as sinners, love this. Biblical faith has an unpopular message. Whatever anyone else has done, and as sinners they will sin, what about your responsibility and your guilt? The greatness of David was that he did not blame Bathsheba or anyone else. He acknowledged that it was his guilt, his act, his sin. But most people today will not acknowledge their guilt. They attend churches which preach another gospel, and they will not break with them. They claim that they are trying to reform the church from within, but each year these churches become more openly anti-Christian, and they still remain. These people profess loyalty to Christ, but the only loyalty they manifest is to an anti-Christian church. Are they not guilty? We can go on indefinitely. Suffice it to say that most people find it convenient to turn to the Marxist, environmentalist answer and say, the bad guys are responsible for all our problems, and they continue to believe that they can redeem the public schools as socialistic agency. They turn their children over to a non-Christian, socialistic school and then ask God to bless them. And they wonder why their children turn into rebels.
Appended to this report is a graduation address by Gay Papatov, valedictorian, San Jose Christian School, 8th grade, June 19, 1969. Gay reflects her Christian home and school in her address, and she has a maturity lacking in the 8th graders of our socialistic schools. But to return to our points, the trend will not change until the people change. We have too many people who want to change the world, too few who admit that man needs changing and that only the grace of God can accomplish this. God's appointed means are Christian institutions. We must, therefore, begin reconstruction now, prayerfully and hopefully. We must stand on individual responsibility as against environmentalism. We cannot excuse ourselves by saying, the woman gave me and I did eat, or by saying, the communists are to blame, or the democrats, or the capitalistic warmongers. That excuse did not work when it was first tried by Adam. What makes us think it will work with God now? Adam to Marx to men today, it has been a ticket to judgments. Dr. Senholz is right. The people must change before the trend can change. Do you agree? Or do you prefer to line up with Marx and blame the system? In case you missed it in your newspaper, a major university last June granted a master's degree to a student whose thesis was simply eight pages of lines of typed periods. The university accepted the thesis, and the vice president defended the action, although the library decided against filing it. National Observer, June 30th, 1969. Now I read the address of an 8th grade student in a Christian school by way of contrast. Valedictory Address by Gay Papadov, 8th grade Distinguished members of the board, our devoted principal, dedicated teachers, loving parents, most welcome guests and fellow students. It is with great joy that I am able to speak to you tonight in an effort to express the gratitude and thankfulness of my classmates and myself for being able to attend and graduate from the San Jose Christian School. As we all know, there are many philosophies and ideologies striving to win the minds and hearts of the youth today. Christianity in our Reformed churches is being challenged by the theory that a sovereign God is no longer necessary when we have a quote-unquote sovereign federal government that will provide everything God can from the cradle to the grave. Communism is winning the minds of the youth in our country and throughout the world, on the theory that when the youth become adults, the world will be theirs. This godless form of government denies the very existence of God. It bases its hopes for success on man being perfect and sinless, which we know is impossible, since man is totally depraved, sinful and selfish. Our world is in a state of turmoil and confusion. Wars which were once considered infrequent catastrophes are now everyday current events. Students in high schools in large numbers are taking drugs as a rebellion against authority. Students in colleges and universities almost daily practice violence and defiance of authority as an expression of independence. We, who are graduating, are thankful that we have learned not only English, history, mathematics and science, but that God is the source of all truth, the creator of order in the world, and the author of all history, past and future. Our devoted teachers have taught us God's part and place in every subject. We have daily studied the written word and learned his instructions on how we must live to please our great creator, thus ensuring true happiness as we grow into adulthood. Our greatest wish is that all the children in the world could attend schools such as this, with devoted teachers by whom we learn about God, His Word, and the peace that comes only through Jesus Christ our Saviour. I thank you again on behalf of the 8th grade graduating class for building a firm foundation on solid rock, rather than sinking sand. I would like to close with our class theme, Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature 
shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.